Over 50,000 plant species are used around the world for medicinal purposes, most of them harvested from the wild. Every day we depend on products whose ingredients come from wild plants. Particularly in poorer regions, people have few health needs alternatives other than the remedies provided by wild plants. Yet everywhere, plants that were once common are decreasing in number. Many species are threatened and traditional knowledge is disappearing. Devil's Claw is popular the world over, used to treat diseases of the joints. In southern Africa, overexploitation has severely depleted local populations of Devil's Claw. In Namibia, a model project demonstrates how this wild plant species can be managed to ensure lasting supplies. As a result, Devil's Claw is once more becoming common, and the income of local collectors is rising. The San people, or Bushmen of southern Africa, have thus been able to retain a source of income by collecting and drying devil's claw. I make a living by collecting devil's claw. Earnings are not high, but I can feed myself and my family this way. I am happy to work for this project. It is a way of protecting devil's claw as a plant, and it guarantees us an income. This devil's claw from Namibia proves conclusively that such projects work. Conservation of devil's claw and other wild medicinal plants is the responsibility of all those involved. Los objetivos fundamentales que tiene este proyecto es eh, desarrollar una actividad productiva en esta zona que permita eh, generar mano de obra y, y empleo a la gente local. Y el segundo objetivo que tiene este, este proyecto es, a partir del uso sustentable de la especie, una, transformarlo en una eh, herramienta de conservación del guanaco. El grupo de la cooperativa está conformado con pobladores del área protegida, donde participan familias enteras. Eh, nosotros vemos en el campamento su, las madres con sus niñitos, eh, ayudando en la cocina, ayudando en la esquila. La idea de la cooperativa fue siempre vender el, el producto que obteníamos con valor agregado. Se ha comprado maquinaria textil especializada que será utilizada para procesar la fibra de guanaco. ¿Por qué es importante esto? Porque esta es la primera vez que a una cooperativa se le otorgan los medios de producción. Entonces ya los integrantes de la cooperativa dejan de ser jornaleros para ser los dueños de su propia empresa. Hemos hecho hasta 500, 600 gramos en medio día, en cuatro horas. Preparando bien la mecha, el hilo tiene que salir, sale muy bueno. Es rapidísimo lo que yo antes, la rueca esta, para un kilo me demoraba un mes y medio, más o menos. Ahora en ocho horas podemos tener un kilo de, de lana de banana y Palau is short on land, and most of what it has is unsuitable for farming. So for generations, seafood has been the staple of the local people. The ocean is the lifeblood which sustains them. But over 10 years ago, their fish harvest began to decline at an alarming rate. Most of the fish market were forced to close down. Before fishermen go fishing, Usually only one fisherman in the village would feed the whole village. 
only get enough for their pot and then they give the rest to community. But now, people, when they catch many, they sell. Every village has a stretch of waters under its jurisdiction. The village chief decides the time, the species, and the number to fish. We practice conservation way, way back. If a chief would see, or people would see that the fish is getting less in this area, they will put a law. Now you go fish anywhere else, don't fish in this area and let the population of fish come back. Tourism and fishery are the two mainstays of its economy. However, its economic growth has created an ecological crisis in Palau. More and more fishermen have chosen to sell their catch to hotels or restaurants directly. It's been estimated that over half of the catch is now directed towards tourism. In other words, the more developed tourism is in Palau, the more challenges its efforts to protect marine environment will have to face. One of the decisions that countries like Palau has to make is whether or not to export their coastal resources. There are not enough for local use, including for tourism, and for export markets. So countries like Palau will have to make a decision. Do they export? Do they ensure local food security? Do they want to feed their tourism sector? They can't do it all. One of the biggest stories in the region was the ornamental fishery that occurs here. And the people that live here, the fishing communities that are living over a very broad range of the Amazon, all benefiting from this resource, understand that their fisheries depend on pristine resources. And they serve as a very effective first line of defense for the forest. And they really will not allow any destructive practices uh, to happen. They know the area very well. They'll know where they can expect to find cardinal tetras. And uh, they'll paddle out. They'll even just look at the trees and shrubs and the physical sh shape of the environment to know that there's a high likelihood of uh, where there'll be fish. They have a technique where they can actually uh, splash the water a little bit. And they call it um, calling the fish. They'll lean over and just do this uh, technique uh, that really amazed me where they can literally call the fish to them to find out if, if there are enough fish there. They often feed the fish and the fish are often fed just table scraps or, or whatever they have around. In Barcelos, there are some floating transfer stations where they'll offload their tubs and their catch will be counted and they'll get paid um, for their fish. So there we go, there's a bag of a bag of large wild cardinals from Brazil. They're actually really good sized. And we'll we'll get them in. Uh Festa de Peixe Ornamental de Barcelos, the ornamental fish festival of Barcelos. And it's the, the culmination, the manifestation of the cultural importance of the fishery to the region. It's another example of the powerful role that this ornamental fishery plays, uh, socioeconomically, with livelihoods, environmentally, with protectionism. 